We thank God the Lord is helping us in that. Amen. Have you found your scripture there in Luke? Luke chapter 12. In verse 31, Luke 12, 31, well, back up to verse 29, seek not what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or be ye of doubtful mind, is he worried and anxious about these things, necessities of life. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows that you have need of all these things. Should you think twice in an anxious way about if you're going to have something to eat tomorrow or something to wear or a place to live, you should, you should not spend one moment fretting about these things for yourself or your children Said out loud, the money will be there. The food to close. The housing. The necessities of life. It'll be there. So people worry about, am I going to have money for my kids' education? Am I going to have money for this? Am I going to have money for that? Said out loud, it'll be there. It'll be there. I'll never want. I'll never lack. But now he tells us the key to experiencing the no lack, what did he say? He said, verse 31, but rather, instead of seeking after those things, seek ye what? Now see, we've said this so many times that if we're not watchful, we, that phrase doesn't mean much to us. Seek what? Seek going to church. That's not what he said. Seek reading your Bible and praying. That's not what he said. He didn't even say just seek God. What did he say? Seek first the kingdom of God. Right? Is it important that we be putting first and pursuing and seeking the kingdom of God? Well, you and I know, you know, we just embarked on this study a few weeks back talking about the kingdom of God. And uh, for something that Jesus puts so much emphasis on, we know precious little about it. It's just like something we've become familiar with, a common phrase, the kingdom of God, but do we really know what he's talking about? What is the kingdom of God? How do you seek the kingdom of God? Said out loud, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now, like we've mentioned before, Jesus was very kingdom of God minded. Do you suppose he still is? Well, he never changes. I mean, he, you know, I've heard people before say, you know, well, Jesus preached this or he preached that. One person I heard on TV, I've heard other people say this. They were saying, Jesus preached love and acceptance. Love and acceptance. And of course, their main emphasis was acceptance. And you could tell by listening to them a little while, what they're talking about is you accepting their sin. Jesus preached acceptance. And when they said it for about the fifth time, the Lord spoke up in my heart. I don't mean I heard an, heard an audible voice. He spoke up. He said, no, I didn't. What do you mean? I did not preach acceptance. Well, what did he preach? So I went back and reminded myself, and I looked through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John carefully, what did Jesus preach? And if you've done it, you know he preached the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of God, our kingdom of heaven. That's what he preached. That's what he emphasized. He talked about it so much that his disciples were so kingdom of God minded, they thought it was going to happen right then. Right? Jesus emphasized it so much. Have you, have you studied his parables? The pearl of great price. The... Uh, parable of the seed and the sower, and the list goes on and on. They're all about the kingdom of God. He would say, how can I explain to you the kingdom of God? And he'd start off on these parables. And it was all about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Should we be as kingdom of God minded? Yes. And they still were in the book of Acts. They were just as kingdom of God minded. You can read it and study it. So we've begun on this, and let's continue today on the kingdom of God. Go to uh, Luke, you're already there in Luke 12, go to Luke 19. 
Luke 19. Verse 10. Are y'all believing God with me this morning for utterance? And you do understand that what kind of ministry we have is not all up to me. You have a part. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. As they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He talked so much about it until they were thinking, it's, it's going to manifest today, right now, the kingdom of God. This is what he said. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a what? A kingdom. So what is he talking about? Why is he telling this? Because they thought the kingdom of God was about to manifest there on the earth immediately. And so he's, he's giving this teaching to them because of that. He said, he, he went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Now let's just stop right now. Who does the nobleman represent? What does the far country represent? Well, Jesus has come, right? And then he left. His spirit is here. We're with him by faith, but he's not here. How many understand Jesus has a, a, a flesh and bone body? Right? You can touch it just like you can touch yours. But he's not here. Where is he? He's at the right hand of the Father. That's a long ways from here. Far? Country? It's, somebody said, how far is it? We don't know. It's a lot further than we can see out with our telescopes, our measure. But it's amazing how fast he can get here. And his angels can get here. I mean... I'm very interested to learn about that. <laughs> Being a, uh, what's, what's the word? I appreciate speed. Let me put it like that. <laughs> I appreciate speed. <laughs> and one of these days, whoo, you know the psalmist said his, his chariot uh, is very swift. Like the lightning. Have you ever watched lightning? Sometimes I have watched storms as they approach. I just like to see it. You can't hardly see it. It's like, phew, fast. That's the way he, he's coming too. Right? Oh, God is so wonderful and so powerful and so, so strong, so fast. Everybody say fast. fast. Oh, he's fast. Now, he said he went to a far country. That's Jesus is there far away now. To receive what? For himself a kingdom and to what? Is he coming back? And what's happening? He's receiving his kingdom. And we, we went into this uh, last Sunday. The, the kingdom, kingdoms of this world, Revelation says, have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Right? And his kingdom is going to be established in the earth. And there'll, no, there'll be no more uh, republic of this, or united this or that, or nation of this and that. All of the kingdoms will be gone. Amen. And there will just be the kingdom of God. Amen. But it said, he, he's, he's gone to the far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And how many know we are closer to his return than anybody has ever been? Then any that's, that's a given. Any generation that's ever lived, we're closer to it right now. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said to them, Occupy, or the Greek says, Trade till I come. 
But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him and said, We will not have this man to reign over us. Did you know that people have historically rejected God's choice? People think they love God, but when he sends somebody to them, they don't want them. It's happened again and again. It happened with Moses. Didn't it? Was Moses the called and chosen of God? He and Aaron. And what did the people do? They rejected him. I mean, they weren't into that thing very, very long until they said, let's make us some gold calves. As for, as for this Moses, we don't know what happened to him. What about David? What about Jesus? Came to his own, and his own received him not. I mean, again and again and again, people have rejected God's choice. They said, we don't want this man to reign over us. There's whole groups of people that have rejected Jesus in the earth today, haven't they? They don't want him. Well, tough. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And how many believe in process of time, every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. Smart ones confess now. <laughs> right? Of their own free will. Wise ones bow their knee now. Do I have any wise ones in here today? You confess Jesus as your Lord now. You bow your knee to his lordship now. You're going, and the longer this thing goes, the gladder you are going to be that you did. Verse 15, it came to pass that when he was returned, having received what? Having received the kingdom, he commanded his servants to be called to him to whom he had given the money and that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Does God have any servants in the earth? Yes. Are you one of his servants? Yes. You and I are his servants. Has he given us anything to do? Yes. Has he given us any anointings or any giftings or abilities? Yes. And resources and opportunities to, to get gain for his kingdom. Will we be rewarded when he comes? When his kingdom is set up? The final kingdom, the everlasting kingdom in the heaven, new heavens and new earth. Will we be rewarded for anything that we did to profit the kingdom? To benefit the kingdom that was gained for the kingdom? Will other stuff matter? Will how much money you made matter? Will how famous you became, will that matter? No. What will matter then? Only what we did for the kingdom. Oh, this is not real enough to us. I said this is not real enough to, mo to most people. People live for the advancement and the gain of their company or their own personal nest egg or, or, or wealth or their own personal pleasure or hobbies or what I'm my dream. But we ought to be out for the kingdom, advancing the kingdom because the other stuff's not going to matter. All the stuff we spent our life for, all the things we did. How many remember in the New Testament, he talks about that the works are going to be judged by fire. And some of them are going to be like wood, hay, and stubble. Well, what happens to that when it hits the fire? It's burned up, and that's it. It was a bunch of stuff. It was a bunch of work. People put a lot of effort into it and blood, sweat, and tears and money. But it wasn't for the kingdom, and it's going to just go up in smoke, and it's going to mean nothing. But there are going to be things, works, that were done by the direction of the Spirit, that were done out of faith and love, that were done for the advancement of the kingdom of God, and they're going to pass through the fire and come out shining gold and silver and precious jewels. They'll remain for eternity. And people will know. 
a thousand and ten thousand years from now that you did that in the kingdom. It'll never fade. It'll never go away. This is not real enough to, to so many people. If you, if you lived like this and thought like this and I did every day and every moment of our life, it'd change everything we did. You heard about an opportunity to invest in the kingdom? People will run over their self. Right? Trying to say, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me give it. Right? Is it going to advance the kingdom? Then let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Because it's the only thing that's going to matter in time to come. Keep reading. Came the first, verse 16, and he said, Lord, your pound has gained 10 pounds. What does that mean? What you gave me, I used it. And the kingdom of God was advanced and it was multiplied 10 times what you gave me. And the Lord's going to look at him and say, well, well done. Well, you good servant. Is that going to mean something to you? To hear the master look at you and call your name. And say, good job, good job. <laughs> Can you see, this, is not, this has not been real enough to us. But it's happening this morning, and as we go through this, this revelation is coming to us. One day soon and very soon. Lord, help me to get this out. I know, you know, my, my dad just went home to be with the Lord not too long ago. And, uh, d- you know, the Lord ministered to me some things that really helped me far beyond just being comforted over his going home. But in my own life and understanding, he revealed to me, he said, heaven is not real enough to you. I thought it's not. Because so many times when somebody, especially somebody that you know is a Christian, you know they know God and their body dies and they leave here. Well, people look at it as loss, don't they? They do. They look at it as a law. And and people say it. We lost so and so. I don't know how many people filed through and told me, I'm I'm sorry about the loss of your dad. And I know they meant well. But that's not right thinking. I didn't lose him. Right? If a friend of yours went to Kansas City, people don't come by and say, I'm sorry you lost your friend. (laughs) Right? Right? Because they went to Kansas City. I'm sorry you lost them. Yeah, they moved to L.A. I'm sorry about your loss. Huh? Why? Well, why don't people think that way? Because L.A. is real to them. Kansas City is real to them. Right? But heaven is like a fairy tale. It's like, no, heaven is just as real as Branson, but much nicer much it's real the people there are real and the kingdom of God is real soon and very soon he's coming back he's setting up his kingdom in the new heaven and the new earth it's real it's real it's real it's not imaginary it's not pretend it's real how many believe God is real Jesus is real His angels are real. His coming back is real. It's real. And that's all that's going to matter (laughs) is his kingdom. So we might as well get geared that way. See, they were, his disciples thought that way because he talked about it so much. The people in the book of Acts thought that way. It was kingdom of God in the morning, kingdom of God at lunchtime, kingdom of God when the sun went down. They, They were kingdom of God minded. It was real to them. God should be so real to us. Heaven should be so real to us. The kingdom of God should be so real to us. And it's becoming more so. He came uh, to him. He said, your pound has gained 10 pounds. And the Lord said to him, well, you good servant, because you have been what? Faithful in what? A very little. And you know, the biggest we can do down here is very little compared to what's coming. 
You've been faithful in a very little. What's the next phrase? Have thou authority over ten clouds? Ten harps? What? Ten cities. Real cities? Oh, see, this hasn't been real to us. Cities as real as New York and Chicago. Did you hear me? Cities just that real but eternal. Cities. And you have authority over ten of them. Not for a hundred years. Not for fifty, five hundred years. Hmm? Somebody says, who is that? That's Mo. Yeah. <laughs> is, is he the guy? Is the governor over those 15 cities over there? Yeah, that's him. Saint Mo. <laughs> right? Is that right? Is that real to us? St. Rick. You mean he's over those, those 10 cities, over those 15 cities over there? Yeah. Yeah, the Lord assigned that to him. You know, back after the, uh, the resurrection and all those things, and God set up his kingdom and, and the white, great white throne judgment and all those things, and God appointed according to every man's works. Is that right? Yes, his uh, governorship and authority in the eternal kingdom of God. Amen. Have authority over ten cities. And how many know when the king of kings says it, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <sighs> well, it makes you want to stir up here and now, don't it? I mean... It, the second came to him and said, Lord, your pound has gained five pounds. And the Lord said, why didn't you do ten like, the, my, like my other guy? Huh? No, 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 the other guy did ten. Why didn't you do ten? No. No. What did he tell him? If you look at the other accounts, you'll see he told him the exact same words. If you read Matthew's account, well done, good and faithful servant. Exact same words. You have authority over, you be over five cities. You reckon he'd rejoice to be over five cities? I reckon you'd rejoice to, to be ruler over a tree in the eternal kingdom of God. Are you kidding me? Much less five of the holy cities of the eternal kingdom of God. And these cities are just going to get bigger with no death. As the eons go by. <laughs> Can you see this hasn't been real to us? What has been real to people? Alarm, alarm clock going off at 6.30. Navigating the traffic. Huh? Monday morning, electric bill, right? That's what's been real to people, and they get up and they do it, and they come home and get up and do it, and they come home and get up and do it, and come home and act like they're going to do this forever. And you're not. I said, you're not. People act like, well, we, you know, Phyllis and I were talking this morning, you know, coming over. Every day is a gift. Every day is a gift, a gift of life with God and an opportunity to do something in the kingdom of God, a gift to have each other and to fellowship and to serve together. Every day is a gift because this can't go on forever like this. It's, it's got to change. If you could back off. You and I could back off from the earth about where the moon is and see into the spirit and see how many people are leaving this planet at any given moment. We'd be amazed 
And how many people are coming into the planet? Being born. There is this mass of people coming in and going out. Coming in and going out. Nothing down here stays for very long. And you and I, what the Bible say? What is your life? It's even a vapor. You know what a vapor is, don't you? A little wisp. A little puff. It appears for a little while and then vanishes away. That's your and my earthly life. Now, it's all we've known. And we get settled in and we act like it's always going to be like this. It's not. It's not. It's not. How many understand this afternoon, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, everything can be different. Just like that. And sooner or later, it is. It will be. But what do we have to fear? What do we have to dread? When we know we're born again. When we know what happens when we die. We know. And how much more so when we've used our time, we've used our energies, we've used our abilities and our talents for the kingdom of God. Day in and day out and day in and day out. Then you go out of here with a blaze of glory. And you know what's waiting on you on the other side. you got a crown of righteousness laid up for you and rewards. And instead of fearing judgment, we're chomping at the bit for the judgment seat of Christ. That's where we get our assignments. Oh, y'all are not happy enough about this. I'm not talking about the great white throne judgment. We're not going to be a part of that. We're saved. We get to file up before the Lord, and He calls our name. Before everybody, before the Father, before the Holy Ghost, before the angels, before all the saints, calls your name. And said, this one is mine. Bought and washed in my blood. My name is in them and on them. They claimed me unashamed before men in a world full of sin. And now I claim them before my Father and His angels in the eternal kingdom of God. And I don't know how He'll show it or how much of it, but with God's video, audio abilities, who knows? But it will be revealed that you were faithful in what he told you to do. Why was there no difference between his words to the man with ten and the man with five? Because it said in Matthew, he gave them according to their individual abilities. He knows what you can handle and what is right for you. Why didn't he give everybody the five or everybody the ten? Well, people have different abilities and different calls. And it's not how big you were. It's not how much you reached. It's not how many knew your name. It is were you faithful with what he gave you to do. That's it. And if you are, you get the same words. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few small things back in the earth days. Now you're going to be ruler, ruler, ruler. Let me say it again. Do you like the sound of that? Close your eyes here. Ruler. Did he not say we would rule and reign with him? Ruler. Ruler. See, the Bible says the world doesn't know now who we are. Oh, let me read it to you. Hold your place. Go, go to 1 John. Are y'all with me this morning? I'm getting stirred up. I don't know about you, but I'm... Whew. Glory be to God. 1 John, the third chapter. 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. 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 What? That we should be called the sons of God. 
That's what Jesus was called. Why? Because he is the firstborn of many brethren. He calls us brother. Firstborn. Call the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not. Because it knew him not. They didn't know who he was when he came in the earth. Treated him bad. They don't know who we are. Treat us bad. Oh, but there's coming a day. There's coming a day when people are going to see us and they're going to go, Oh, I didn't know who you were. I wouldn't have talked to you like that. I wouldn't have treated you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's going to be late. It's going to be late. They don't know who we are. Verse 3, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Not later, right now. Right now we've been born again of the Holy Spirit of God and we are the sons of God. We are right now. Right now. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. You can't see what we're going to be. But we know that when he shall appear, he's gone to that far country, but he's a returning. He's a coming back. And when he shows up, the glory of God's going to hit us. And we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. Glory to God. Go back to 19, Luke 19. He said to the man, he said, your pound has gained five. He said, you be over five cities. Five cities. How many cities you want to be over? He so says, well, it's just all up to the Lord. Is it? Huh? Huh? If it is, he should have just said, according to my divine sovereignty and predestination. And not said anything about them. But he talked about that they were faithful. Right? In what he gave them to do. And according to their faithfulness, now comes their reward. Is everybody going to be rewarded the same across the board? No, they're not. In fact, the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15 that in the resurrection, we'll differ in glory like the stars. Some stars are brighter than others. There's not just a standard star. There is no heavenly communism and communism. And we're all just equally blessed and all have the same cookie cutter homes, eternal homes. Our homes are going to be different. Our places are going to be different. Our rulerships are going to be different. Somebody said, that don't seem fair. Watch out. <laughs> Got to remember who you're talking to. I'm not the one doing this. You're not the one doing this. He is supremely fair. How many know it wouldn't be fair one man to work all his life for the kingdom of God, another man confess Jesus as Lord, but live selfishly for himself all his life, and they get the same reward? That ain't right. Right? God is right. God is fair. So there will be rulers over ten cities and rulers over five, and this next guy, which is not us. Am I right? Do you know about the next guy? It's not us. He came up and he said, Lord, uh, look here. Here's your pound. And I kept it laid up for you in a napkin. <laughs> now what does that mean? He did not attempt to do anything with it. He made no effort to advance the kingdom of God with what he was given no effort. He said, I feared you because you're an austere man. You take up what you laid not down and you reap that which you did not sow. 
How many know the Lord expects a return on his investment? And not the same thing he put into you. He expects you to multiply it. Increase it. Do something with it. He said, out of your own mouth will I judge you, you wicked servant. You knew I was an austere man, taking up what I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow. Why didn't you give my money to the bank? And that my coming, I might have required mine own with usury. At least I'd have had some interest. Do something with it. Are there people who do absolutely nothing with what God has given them? There are people who do nothing with the opportunities, with the gifts, with the talents. You know, there's some talents and abilities you're born with, but they're from God. There are other things that are added to you when you're born again, or when you fill with the Spirit, or as you grow with God, but they're all gifts from God. And none of them are just for you to revel in, to glorify yourself. They're all for the advancement of the kingdom. Is that right? For the advancement of the kingdom. People use them. You see people that are skilled. People call it talent. And isn't it interesting that that's the word he uses in different places? Talents. I've seen people who are talented in music. Writing and singing and playing. And they only used it for, for personal stardom. People say, well, they're just talented. No, it's a gift God put in them when they were born. And it wasn't just to exploit for themselves, it was to advance the kingdom of God. But they're misusing it. Others don't develop what they have. And so this man, he said, verse 24, he said, take from him the pound and give it to him that has the ten pounds. And they, the crowd spoke up and said, Lord, yeah, but he already has ten pounds. But is the Lord just? Why, why take the one away from the guy who only has one and give it to the guy that already has ten? Why does the guy with ten have ten? He knows what to do with a pound. Right? So give it to somebody who knows what to do with it. And he said, you, uh, verse 26, everyone that has will be given from him that has not. Even what he has will be taken away. But those my enemies that would not that I should reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. He is going to rule. I don't care who doesn't want him. I don't care how many false religions of the world and idol worshipers and every other thing despise Jesus and mock him and make fun of him and spit on him and ridicule him. He is coming. He is coming. King of kings. How many read in the book of Revelation about him sitting on the white horse and the name on him, King of kings and Lord of lords, and behind him there were many that followed him robed in white linen. Right? That's us. That's us. That's us. And he will rule and reign. No matter who thought they liked it or didn't like it, and the ones who didn't want him to reign, tough. They'll be removed. They'll be destroyed. And you'll be so glad, so glad, so glad that you confessed Him and you loved Him and you served Him and you used your talents for the advancement of the kingdom. Say it out loud, the advancement advancement of the kingdom. kingdom. Go to Philippians, please. Look at a couple of more scriptures on this right now. Philippians 2. Thank you, Master. Can you see why the Lord led us to go this direction on kingdom of God? I sure can. I'm learning. I am learning. Philippians 2 and verse 19. He said, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly to you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Now this was the, the churches and the saints that he was writing to. He said, verse 21, for all seek what? 
their own. What are we told to seek? Kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God. By contrast, what are most people doing? Here he said all. That's a big word, isn't it? All seek their own and not the things which are Jesus Christ. Let me read this to you from the Amplified. He said all others, uh, excuse me, others all seek to advance their own interests and not those of Jesus Christ. But Timothy's tested worth, you know, how as a son with his father, he's toiled with me and zealously serving and helping to advance the good news, the gospel, to advance the good news. Being kingdom-minded means you're always thinking, how can we advance the kingdom? How, can, how many understand God didn't give us this truth and these words and the manifestation of the Spirit to hide under a bushel? He wants us to get it out. He, he wants people to hear. He wants people to see. He wants people to know. Right? I'm excited about the, the, the steps that the Lord's helped us with already. The internet. Right? The TV. Other things that are in the works. The, we've got to get the message out. And not just us. Other people, other ministries, other outreaches are already doing wonderful things. And many God's raising up. But we can't just relish in their accomplishments. Because uh, when they get rewards, we're going to want some. You, you know, people try to uh, rationalize and say, well, look at so-and-so. Boy, you know, they're on all these stations and look at these people they're holding crusades and reaching a million people and, and look at these people well that's great that's wonderful but that don't get you rewards that don't get you rulership over a city so we thank God for that but we must think how can I me moi <laughs> today me today how can I advance the kingdom of God Two major ways you can do it. You can do something or you can help somebody do something. Right? Both of them count. So you're doing something God's directing you to do or you're helping somebody do what God directed them to do. Either way, you're a part of the advancement of the kingdom of God. My, my, my. Advancing the kingdom of God. Go to go, uh, hmm. Matthew, please. Thank you, Lord. You got time for a couple of more yes. scriptures? Glory be to God. Matthew 13. And then Luke 18, and I think we'll, I think we'll be there. Advancing the kingdom of God. You know, Christians used to sing, onward Christian soldier. People talk more about being a good soldier and the advancement of the kingdom, and some of that's been lost, hasn't it, in these, gen in these generations of today. But did the Bible, it's the scripture, it's not just old time, it's the scripture that said, endure hardness as a good soldier. And what we have not seen in modern societies, we, we, we've not seen people that are hardened as far as their determined and their resolve and willing to pay any price for the kingdom. We've got a bunch of softies, people that are not willing to be inconvenienced. We, we have a, how many understand we live in a, a convenience-oriented generation? What's comfortable? You've got people that won't even come to church. If it's a little, little bit uh, difficult to get a parking place, or if it's a little too warm, or if it's a little too cool, or if you have to drive over, you know, 15 minutes. You know, these guys driving three hours. That's one way, right? Three, three hours one way to go to church. Well, now that really blows folk out of the water. 
that can't drive 20 minutes. Doesn't it? Makes them look bad. And you know what? When people, people stand up before the Lord and he, and he says, why didn't you go to the church? I told you to go to church. Well, Lord, you know how far it was. It was like 35 minutes one way. He'll point at Jim and Giovanna. He'll say, I got millions like them. Are you listening? So that don't hold water. Why didn't you do it? Well, I, I couldn't make myself available to serve in that part of the church because, you know, Thursday's the day I work in my flower bed. And, you know, I got to take care of my cats on Tuesday. And, you know, I get my nails done on Wednesday. And then, you know, you know what I'm talking about? We, we have a whole society that is so convenience, comfort-oriented, and there is not this cry and this desire and this fire in the belly that you see in the, uh, what's the word? Uh, martyrs. Martyrs of the Bible and of the generations after them, people like Jesus himself willing to lay it all down. Willing to give his spirit, his soul, his body, right, for the kingdom. See, we, we've got men and women in Iraq, Afghanistan, other places. We, you, you see the reports. Somebody died. Somebody lost their life. And we got people who make fun of that. Or we got people who... who, who, who Talk about how ridiculous, ridiculous it is that somebody would lay down their life. Well, that's being disrespectful for these people who are willing to protect us. It's amazing how ignorant people are. We were attacked. We were attacked. Now, what are you going to do? Wait till it happens again? Just wait, and that, that's, what, that's what our enemies were counting on. They figured we'd just wilt. Thank God Amen. for our courageous yes. men and women yes. who go face yes. fire yes. and are willing, willing to pay the ultimate physical price to protect their wife and kids and husband and kids and parents back home. And us, so we can have church this morning. Amen. Right? Amen. People think, well, boy, the world has really come to a mess. No, I did not even think twice that we might get blown up in church this morning. No. Did you? No. There are many places in the world where they do. They're scared silly about it. Why? One big reason is because our people are over there. They're fighting this. They're willing this is for a temporary, earthly nation and security. That's just a vapor. But is it worth it? I thank God that it is to them and to us. And we honor it. How much more though? How much more for the kingdom that is everlasting? That there is no end. Should you and I be willing to spend our last dollar? Right? Go use our last bit of strength. Amen. If it takes it, lay your life down. Amen. And be glad about it. Amen. Right? Amen. For the kingdom of God's sake. Oh, if I had another hour or two this morning. See, we, we've, got, we've got husbands and wives that are here in the States that have not, been, not seen their spouse or been with them for months and months now, or years, because they're doing the job. And they're being strong, many of them. Because they realize it's a job that's got to be done. But you see, people in the church don't have that mentality. I've had pastors tell me I don't know what to do. My wife is so mad at me all the time because she says, you're just busy in the ministry all the time and you have no time for me and you have no time for me. Well, what if he was gone for three years? 
we should be willing to pay these prices. Did you hear me? And she ought to quit whining and get in there and start helping him. Well, we have to go and be away from home and I, I don't get to eat at what I like and I don't get to sleep on my bed and we do. Oh, hush. You're acting unworthy. Well, it's hot over there. <laughs> well, bless your little whiny baby heart. <laughs> Get a clue. Stand up. Be a man. Be a woman of God. Be willing to give you all. Get up early. Stay late. Spend all. Give all. Do all. If it costs you life, it costs you life. But it's the kingdom of God. This life will be gone soon anyway. Right? See to it that it was spent well. That if you did, it did cost you that, fine, but that it was worth something. The young men and women that have died on the foreign field in our military, in my mind, there's no question. They have not died in vain. The world's a different place. Right now. And for the future. It's, it's buying us time. I said it's buying us time. Somebody said, yeah, but it's just a natural thing. No, they're buying time for the church. It takes on eternal kingdom significance because they're buying time for the church where we can move around still with freedom. And the gospel can still go out of this place and around the world with a lot of freedom. And more so in some places than it's ever been. Takes on kingdom significance. Said out loud, I will live. I will die. I will work. I will spend all. I will give all for the kingdom of God. For the love of God. For the Master's sake. For the kingdom's sake. Hallelujah. No price is too great. Right? Let me finish in Luke 18. Are you there? Did I tell you to go there? Well, good. Luke 18. I'll read this in closing. Oh, I have the sense that some troopers are being raised up. People that are not just talkers and whiny babies. They're, they're doers. Uh, it's... Lord, help me to express these things. I... People have romantic, goofy ideas about the ministry. You've got to be tough to be in the ministry. You can't let just any little thing or any big thing knock you out of serving God and obeying God. I, you know, I'm, I've served with Brother Hagin for many years and and there were times that he called on me to sing, and I, could, I couldn't speak loud enough for you to hear me. I had blown my voice and praying too loud and speaking too much. And, but I knew in my heart I'm supposed to do this. Sometimes you didn't feel good. But by faith you get up, and you believe you can. And sometimes I squeaked on the first three or four words, but here it came. Here came the grace of God. Here came the strength of God. Sometimes, there, there were times when I was out on the road and it's time for me to speak and somebody calls and some of my people's got major problems and I'm tempted to say, hey, I can't do this. I got to go and take care. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. You take care of mine and I'll take care of yours. And you got to gird up your loins and be strong and say, no, no, set your face and, and move forward. Remember we were going in one time to ministry and a young uh, lady that had been helping me uh, I think her boyfriend had just broke up with her or something and emotionally she was challenged and, and she was supposed to be singing for me that day and we started out and she started crying. She said, I can't, brother, I can't. I, I, I took her by the shoulders and I turned her around and pointed her toward the platform. I said, you're not doing this for me. Who do you serve now? She said, the Lord. I said, there it is then. There's the platform right there. Somebody said, that's hard. No, no. How many know when you're in war? What if everybody gets scared and runs or they're not feeling well? I don't feel good. I'm not going to fight today, okay? 
I'm just going to stay in the tent. Well, everybody would stay. Somebody said, well, it's life and death out there. What do you think it is here? It's not just physical life and death. It's eternal life and death. Oh, we got to get our heads changed. we got to get our minds renewed and be strong and do what it takes. What if, it, what if it's inconvenient? So what? Wasn't convenient for Jesus to go to the cross. Aren't you glad he was kingdom minded? Willing to pay it all. In Luke 18, you see what Jesus said about this very, very thing. Luke 18, the story, you know, of the, the rich young ruler asking, what can I do to inherit eternal life? Let me see, am I at the right place? Luke 18, are you there? And down in the latter part of it, verse uh, 23, the rich young ruler, you know, when he told him to sell what he had and give it to the poor and come follow him, he was very sorrowful. And he left and went away greed, you know, because he, he was very rich. What, what, did we find, what did he find out about himself? He's not committed, right, to the kingdom of God. He's not willing to give up a little money that he can't keep and take with him anyway. Did you get that? Yeah. And verse uh, 26, they said, who can be saved? Jesus said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, lo, we have left all. We have left everything and followed you. What about us? <laughs> Jesus looked at him, he said, verily, how many when the Lord says verily, what does that mean? It is written in the eternal stone. You can count on this. There is no man, nobody has left a house or a parent or a brother or a wife or a children. All there are times when you may have to leave family. Go on a mission. All there are times you may have to uproot from your beloved home. Oh, that's too weak. That's too weak. Did you hear? See, do you know there, there are untold people have missed the plan of God over a house and a few acres? Amen. Untold people. Amen. Well, yeah, but mom and them's here and, and everybody and I'm, this is my home. Yeah, that's what I thought about three homes ago. <laughs> but I found out my home... It's wherever the Lord says Amen. your business is. Because none of these is really my home. Amen. He's working on my place right now. Amen. And yours. Amen. So no need getting attached Amen. to any of this stuff down here. In your heart, you ought to be like Abraham. In your heart, you live in a tent. Amen. And you, you can strike that thing and move tomorrow. Amen. Go anywhere do anything with anybody? Why? Because we're good soldiers for the Lord and soldiers get transferred. And it don't matter what you like or what kind of climate you like or what kind of geography you like. Oh, God's talking to some people in this place. Right? <laughs> right? No, pe people think that matters more than anything. It does not. That's acting like you're going to live on that little place forever and you're not. Your days are numbered. They're short. It doesn't matter whether it's the south or the north or mom and daddy's place. It matters. Are you where God wants you to be doing what he told you to do? That's all that matters. And is your life making a difference to advance the kingdom of God some way, somehow? Are you doing something? Or are you helping somebody do something for the advancement of the kingdom? That's all that matters. That's all. He said, we left everything, Lord, we did. You know, they're looking at the guy. He wouldn't leave his money. They said, we did. We left our fishing business. We left our money. We left our investments. We left our folks. Yep. How about us? You know, you read the other accounts. He told them, he said, you are going to sit with me on 12 thrones. <laughs> you think they're going to be crying about that little fishing business then? 
if we knew just how pitiful it was to throw away our future over this little junk here, how ignorant it is. Mm. <laughs> what did he say? He said there is nobody that's left a house or parents or brothers or wife our children, for the kingdom of God's sake. Did you hear it? Say it out loud. For the kingdom of God's sake. What would you leave it for? The kingdom of God's sake. Kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive. Manifold more. You know, sometimes the other writers say 30, 60, 100, or excuse me, 100 fold. That's what it says in that passage. A hundredfold now more in this present time. That's right here and now. And, and here's the big thing. <laughs> that ain't even the big thing. Somebody said, a hundredfold? Yeah, whoopee. But that ain't the big thing. In the world to come, life everlasting. And we know that includes rulership and authority in the everlasting kingdom of God. I tell you, it makes me want to start five new ministries tomorrow. How about you? Because, oh, glory to God, that's all that matters is the kingdom of God getting people born again and getting them in the kingdom and getting the saints delivered and set free and built up and edified and grown up and the will of God done and the vision of God done because soon and very soon the trumpet's going to sound and here he's going to come and he's going to set up his kingdom forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Stand on your feet and give God glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, lift up your hands, say glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, praise you, praise you, praise you. Eyes closed if you would. No looking around. This is an important moment. If you've not done this, you need to do it. If you've done it, you want to reaffirm. Say it out loud of your mouth, not because you're parroting me, but before the Lord with all your heart. Say it out loud. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son who died on the cross, paid the full price for all my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead. He's alive right now. King of kings. Lord of lords. Soon to come again. I believe in the kingdom of God. I believe in future reward. We shall rule and reign. So here and now, you have me. I give my life, my breath, my money, my time, my talents, everything I have control over, everything I have access to is available to you to advance your kingdom as you see fit. I am yours. Use me as you please. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What key you in, brother? Go to G. For he is Lord. He is Lord. Everybody say, He has risen from the dead, and he
say you're my Lord you're my Lord sing it to him you're my Lord you have risen from the dead and you're my Lord every in the very, very near future. The heavens are going to be folded up like a garment. The elements of this earth are going to melt with fervent heat and all that was will be no more. And then down out of heaven like a shimmering jewel comes the heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, prepared of God, and a new heaven and a new earth, wherein is no more curse, no more sin, no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, and the King of kings and the Lord of lords establishes His kingdom forever and forever, and there you are, and there I am Oh, the glory Oh, the majesty Oh, the splendor Oh, the light of heaven The righteousness The holiness Oh, the grace of God Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, help us not to waste another day not to waste another breath, another moment, another dollar on things that won't matter in the kingdom to come. Enlighten us, guide us, teach us that our days may be redeemed and our time may make a difference and our job in the kingdom be accomplished that we may soon hear, well done, good and faithful servant, been faithful over a little come now be ruler over much enter into the joy of the Lord the kingdom of the most high God that shall never end hallelujah open your eyes if you would if you confess Jesus for the first time this morning here or by TV or by internet don't leave as everybody else is going out. You come down to the front. There will be people standing here ready to talk with you. If you're giving your life back to the Lord this morning, or you want to be filled with the Spirit, either one. Don't leave. Come down to the front. There are people ready here to talk with you. You need to let somebody else know that now you're part of the kingdom. Write us, email us, call us. If you're here, come down front. We're going to sing it as we go. Say it out loud, not another wasted day. Hallelujah. Let this burn in your hearts all day today, all night tonight, tomorrow. Say it out loud as you go across your house, as you drive in your car, the kingdom of God. 
The kingdom of God is here and the kingdom of God comes soon. Both are true. We go as we say. You are Lord.